Welcome to the Venus and Mars show, and we are so happy as usual to have you back with us tonight. I'm Peter, or Mars. And I'm Anne, known as Venus. Well, we have a special guest coming on tonight, John J. Fahey of the Boston Neighborhood Network Channel, also oh, known as BNN. And John will be talking about his show and other things that he has accomplished. Very accomplished. Well, I haven't seen you since, when was it? Um, October 20th. We, we had oh, our God, 40th. Oh, God, you're going to tell everybody? We, yeah, we had our 40th reunion. Oh. Uh, Ann and I were both classmates. We grew up and graduated. We grew up in Braintree. We graduated from Braintree High. We didn't grow, I didn't grow up in Braintree, oh, that's but right. I graduated she, she, from Braintree she High. She was a transplant. <laughs> um, but we did graduate together in 1970. What was that year? 78. No, not saying yeah. it. It was a lot of fun, though. And a lot of thanks to Nancy Lee and um, her Jill. Jill. Um, I don't want to say, no, I want to say Jill Witten, her maiden name, yeah, yep. who was the uh, past um, organizer of all these, and all the ladies that helped. It was a yeah. great time. Um, I do want to make a special shout out, though. To? For someone who wasn't able to make our reunion because she was ill, Deborah Sundin. Oh, yeah. I got the best news today. Share it, please. She is cancer-free. Oh, that's wonderful. I was concerned. <laughs> she had her I, last chemo yesterday. She had her testing today, and the tumor is not even visible. Yeah, because it really so, hurt when... Thank you for fighting, Deb, and keep up no, the good work. Right, and unfortunately, one of our classmates who, was, who had expressed a lot of desire, couldn't wait to go... I know. ...was Ann Batchelder. Did I say it right? Batchelder. I oh, knew yeah, her. Yeah. I was in her in classes. Uh, unfortunately, she passed a few months ago. Oh. Uh, I believe of the cancer, I believe, but I'll say... Anyway, the, uh, there's been some big news uh, in the Boston area, uh, mm. and uh, I, I don't want a uh, notorious individual, Whitey Bulger. Yes. Well, when that happened, I thought that uh, I thought of you, of course. Mm -hmm. How have you been dealing with that? Uh, it's been an emotional roller coaster, just like everything else. Uh, the time of year is not one that's very welcome for me anyway yeah. with PTSD about the whole situation. Um, and those of you that don't know, my father did disappear back when I was nine years old. Uh, he was missing for two and a half months and I did find his car parked on the Granite Ave Bridge and two months later his body floated up on Carson Beach. And in the end, um, I ended up at the Whitey Bulger trial and found out, you know, quite a bit about what had gone on and what the potential was for the ending of my father's life. So to hear that Whitey has an end to his life, I got a call about a half an hour before it hit the news from law enforcement telling me the news, and I was in rather disbelief, Yeah, actually. that was kind of, was very considerate of them to call and reach out to you. Oh, well, yeah, um, um, absolutely, and I, I appreciate them for that. Yes. We, um, you know, I had contact with some of the other family members, too, and um, all just kind of disbelieved, but as the more and more we saw it on the news and heard about it, of course, it starts to sink in, but my next question was, hopefully it wasn't from natural causes. Right. So, uh, well, you wouldn't have been the first to express it that way. There was a lot of, um, no, nobody was holding up, what do they call it, pulling punches? Nobody was pulling punches, really. Nobody was shedding a tear. Oh, no, um, and each detail that came out, I know this is a horrible thing to say growing up Catholic, but I'm going to say it because I feel it, that I was happy with every little detail that I yeah. found. And out. you also allowed me to read some letters that he wrote you from uh, prison, yes, yeah, Whitey Bulger did I mean, write I was, to I, me from for prison. Me, from, from, from my standpoint, it was like hard to believe because they just made a huge movie about him in Black Mass, you mm -hmm. know, about that. And it's like, yeah. I'm reading from this guy's hand. Now he claims he had nothing to do with it, right? Well. No, no, he claims, I said. He, he claimed if he knew, he wouldn't tell. Mm. He had that, I don't want to yeah. be a rat image to hold up uh, to. Yeah. That was his claim to fame. Well, I'm glad that... Uh, this may bring some sort of closure to this very long ordeal you've had to go through in your life. Yeah, thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, we got up next. We got John J. Fahey coming up. Yay! Yay, John! <laughs> <laughs> John, thank you for coming on our show tonight. I oh, know. Peter, Anne, it's my pleasure. Of course, thank you for coming on my show. Well, we'll get to that in a second. This, we have John J. Fahey on with us tonight. He is the producer of the uh, cable TV show 
The John J. Fahey Show, and it's uh, on Boston Neighborhood Network. That's right. Yes. Also BNN, known as BNN. For short. Yeah, uh, it's a Boston market, and John is here tonight to tell us something about his show, and we'll just see where well, it goes. Can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. It's not just in Boston, though. Uh, no, it's good point. it's it's in a lot of different places. Thank you, Anne. Thank yeah. you, mm -hmm. Peter, for inviting me. The show is out of BNN in Boston, and it's carried on three systems. It's carried on Verizon, it's carried on Comcast, and it's also carried on RCN. But it's also live stream, so people have the opportunity of watching it on their computer, and we have it on social media as oh. well. So people, like you said, both of you are correct, it's also out there for everyone to see. Yeah. And uh, Ann and I have been on your show together. That's correct. And I also was one time alone That's right. on their show. Now, uh, now we're on the subject of your show. Um, you know, people do call in, which is another interesting uh, angle that right. you have that we because don't have. Because it's live, right? Right. Um, does anybody have a call from like, I'm, done, I'm being serious, like England or anything like that? Because no, we've had people watch, We've had people call in from out of state. Yeah. Uh, and the reason they've called in from out of state is because the, the the guests that we have on the show tend to be people from the entertainment world, authors directors, independent film directors, screenwriters, right, actors. Right, the same kind of talent right, we have. exactly. Yeah. And people are always traveling. People have uh, connections in other parts of the country, too. So because it's live stream and people can watch the show on, com on their computer, they'll say, well, you know, when we put it out there, we advertise it before. Hey, you know, this person is going to be on the show. We'll call in and ask a question. So we have had people call in from other parts of the country to, to yeah. ask questions. And people, of course, in Boston, most of the calls, when they do call in, Peter and Ann, are from Boston, of course. Right, right. Well, I remember on the show that I was on, there was at least six or seven calls that mm -hmm. came in, so it's not like it's uh, silent out there. No. no. You know? And you know, when people don't call in, <laughs> Uh, it, that's fine too, because people have told me, they say, we watched the show, we enjoyed so much what that guest had to say, but we just wanted to sit and hear what they had to say. Yeah. Now, you know, and then you, you have other people call in and ask questions. How did you get this, uh, the John J. Fahey start? How long has it been that you've been doing your this show? This particular show is about five years, and Jim Sayer and I both co host the show. And Jim's an actor as well, and uh, between the two of us, we have a lot of people that we, we know, we, we've networked with and they come on the program and talk about the projects they're involved with. But prior to that, it was a political show. And when I say political, wow. I mean, I, well, when I say that, <laughs> let me, let me. It was in a different era. It was in a different era, but also <laughs> let me define what that was. That was a, a program where we would have people from the city council come on and talk about the projects in the city. Oh, locally. We would do debates. I would moderate the debates. Wow. People would be on talking about that. People would. Uh, would you moderate or incite? Moderate, moderate. <laughs> the callers would ins the callers perhaps might do that because it was a call yeah. too, right? And John's so, over in the corner yeah, and the lights yeah, going. Gonna, oh, no, please don't. No. I know. <laughs> so get me out of this. <laughs> people uh, would come on the program and talk about, um, you know, what they were doing politically, and it gave them an opportunity also to address the public, address the Boston public about where they stood on the issues and welcome the calls that came in and we did that. So it, it wasn't like a political, political show yeah. like, but like that. Uh, it gave the opportunity for people to call in and ask questions. Now generally, was it civil or were some of these calls? It was civil. Yeah, the it callers, I mean. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so you've been doing that show for about five years, as you said. The John J. Fahey show. The John show. J. Fahey show. Politics Today was the show prior to Right, that. and then what, what, the, how long was that show on? That was on about 12 years. And wow. then before that? That was on 12 years, and then the John J. Fahey show was on about five, five. years. Yeah, but I think you, did, didn't you say you've been in the business for 25, off the camera, that is, uh, 25 years yes. or so? Okay. Well, well uh, close, well, in 90, I believe the show, the show premiered in 90, 93 or 94. If I'm not Jeez, mistaken. we're all young then. So <laughs> it was about over 20 years anyway, over yeah. 20 years. And this show here is probably about five or six years, and the other show close to 15, perhaps. Yeah. The way it is now, it's a little different than it was, because originally it was a half hour. Um, and then people were interested in the show, so we expanded it to an hour. It was a half hour taped. And then we expanded it to one hour live, so people wow. had the opportunity to, to call in and ask questions. And the reason that we're doing the show now, the Fahey show now, is because the people that are coming on, they're coming on about the entertainment industry and about movies in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, being made, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's an exciting industry. There's and so people much come now. on and talk about that, so it's more expansive as far right. as the topic. Mm -hmm. And 
it's the Hollywood East, if yeah, you will. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. People come and talk about that. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to handle down here, too. Even though there's a lot going on in Boston, you know that Weymouth was one of the sites that they were originally going to do the true Hollywood East. There have been several films shot on yes in, in Weymouth. As a matter of fact, the Ghost recently Fun, the Ghostbusters, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. They continue to use it as a set, but it's not called the Hollywood East. Right. They went forward with more buildings is down it, there. Is it located at the? I'm guessing uh, it, the airbase. It is. Sure. What's hot? It seems like sure. there's a lot in there. But when it kind <laughs> of disappeared there. Yeah. You know, for that, mm. I still, Peter and I felt that there's a lot of talent still all the way down south here yeah. that we should be able to highlight. It's a very, yeah, it's a, it's a big market. It's a New England regional market. And a lot of uh, actors uh, are here. Look at the, many of the actors that are producing big time Hollywood films, too, right from Dorchester, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact. You have a lot of talent here. And what we would like to do, what the objective of the, film, of the, the show is, is to you know, showcase the people that come on, talk about what they're doing, and also tell people how important it is to keep the industry alive here mm -hmm. in New England. Agreed. And that's important. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What do you, what do you, speaking of cable and cable shows, mm -hmm. any idea of the demographics of who watches in terms of age now? That's, um, you know, do you, do no, but I saw, and I saw something about millenniums yesterday about how few millenniums have television now because mm -hmm. everything is... is you mean they don't even buy one? I'm right, just saying I don't right. live They're with them. They're watching it on their computer. They're watching shows on computers and you know iPads and things like that. And because of um, that, they really don't get a worldly appeal on the world, if you will, or any kind of opinion. Yeah. They can actually zone down to just exactly. the single shows that they want, which doesn't it's expand. Which specifically, yes. right? And uh, but I think cable is very important because what cable allows people to do, <clears throat> and I'll give you an example of that, is to bring local issues to local people, just like here in Plymouth, you have this, you know, you have the, the, the town fathers, if you will, the town mm -hmm. fathers and mothers bringing certain things to the local audience that probably wouldn't be anywhere else because this is specific to Plymouth. But I did a program years ago when the show was political and a candidate came on who was running for statewide office and he wasn't, con he wasn't taken seriously. The reason why he wasn't is because he was running against a very strong opponent, mm -hmm. but he didn't have the coverage in the media that it that would have helped. Yeah. And he came on my show, and he said one of the major uh, network shows and you. He's talking to me. Yeah. Gave us the opportunity to prevent to, to present my views to the people of the state mm. because that's important. So that's important too. So right. people endemic and locally are getting from public access the information that's important for them. Now how did you get started in the business? I took a workshop. I took a workshop in Boston because I had an interest in television. I had a, a small involvement with TV before this. In the 90s I took a workshop at BNN which allows you to become a producer. It gives you the option to know how to operate the board and all the technical aspects of it, which I'm sure you do as well. We did the studio. Right. Thing. And then you, uh, if you'd like to develop your own television program. And I did do that because I had an interest in that. And it, it, it went very well for a while. And then when the movie industry became bigger in Massachusetts, we decided to shift it and then make it more um, what it is now. Entertainment. Yeah, entertainment based, right. Okay. Now have you ever been appeared in any movies or Yes, I have. I've done a few things and uh, you were talking about the, 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 the base in Weymouth. I worked a couple of weeks on Ghostbusters. Oh you did? Yeah. How much fun did you have? I had a lot of fun. <laughs> we worked with a lot of great people. It was a very, very good opportunity. Mm -hmm. When was this John? This was a few years ago. I remember and, uh, but I just remember. it was a few years ago. And I think that there's been a lot in this area, you know, Massachusetts. Certainly there are a couple of films being shot right now and giving a chance, that's giving a chance, not only for the actors, but for the ancillary businesses that are out there too. Yeah. That they have that, and not only that, but look at the, look at the, look at the, uh, the public relations that Absolutely. come from film. Like people are sitting in Asia perhaps, you know, in Europe saying, yeah. hey, Boston's a, oh, Massachusetts, that's a great state, we'll go visit there. And I think that that helps too. Yeah, a lot to yeah. see. Well, we've made headlines, unfortunately and fortunately, 
you know, both with marathon bombing or, yeah. you know, the highlights of us oh, yeah. almost it's becoming been... the headquarters, the second headquarters for Amazon, but we just lost out on that. Right. You know, that's some income course, that would have been title, good. Of course, we're the title, we're title town, of course, <laughs> all the sports thing, but yeah. No, Boston for a small, I know, I don't mean to digress, but Boston for a small, it's really a small city. Relatively. Relatively it's small a, it's city. It's, it's a relatively uh, small city, It's correct. big on the map, of course. the global map right. as well. Um, but let's talk about clothes for a second. Like, Ann and I dress up, you know, usually in a blazer and stuff like that. And we've got guests that come in. We've got, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We have guests that come on and sometimes they dress, you know, nice. And other times they dress what they consider nice. It's just the way they feel. They might be in a t-shirt and all that. Now, on your show, you wear a suit and tie. And when I was a guest, I wanted to wear a suit and tie because I don't get to wear one very often. But if you watch now, television, many people do dress casual now. Yeah. But if you watch television, a lot of people still wear ties and jackets, and those type of apparel, that type of apparel does stand out. I think it's important for people to dress the part. And uh, of all in, of all businesses, this is an image-based business. Of all businesses, it's visual. Yeah. People well, see. People see. You. Well, I'm, the reason why I'm saying, I'm, I mean, I'm getting. To, I'm housing a couple of hockey players in my house right, right now. I'm, I'm, what do they call it? Billeting. I've got one from a boy, uh, a guy from Canada, mm -hmm. and a guy from New York. Every time they have a game, they have to dress up in a suit. Yeah, they do. But they don't dress in an old man's suit. They look really, yeah, really well, sharp. And that's right? important. I think and that, it's like, why don't you do this more often? Well, that's that's <laughs> important because if you know they're in the public as well. Yes. You know, when you're in the public, people expect a certain thing, even though it may be subliminal. Uh, from the public's perspective, they, they may not be consciously saying, oh, that guy is dressed up or that young lady is dressed up, but they, they know it. Yeah. They know it. They can sense it. And I think it's important, especially in television, especially in sports as well, because people are role models for other people. Oh, yeah. And I think that's important. Well, you know, all the football players, whether you can tell they get $1,000 suits or $5,000 suits. But you don't have, but, but you don't <laughs> no. have to go Oh, that, no, 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 I know You that. know, you don't have to I go I go that. for the bargain specials, $49. Right. Right. At, <laughs> exactly. But part of their contract in the NHL requires them to mm. be in suits if they're off the ice. Right. In order to and, promote and, that image. And not only that, but they're, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know exactly what the, the prices are, but I'm sure that, that many suits and ties are a le lot less than some of the other clothing that people buy as well, but the suit and tie does give the professional image. Absolutely. That's why it's been so well, popular for so many years. I guess what, I, what I'm getting is you, you don't make it a requirement. I wanted to wear a suit and tie, but you just let, like we do, yeah. we don't yeah. tell people you, what you to could, wear. No. Yeah. no, and when you go on television, the audience will see you the way you are, of yeah. course, but, um, and that's that's up to the individual, but I think it is important that, that you take the audience the view is into consideration too, and how you present yourself, mm -hmm. especially for young people, like you said. Yeah, I think that's important. Don't they always say in school? Well, when I went to school, dress for success. They st and they still do. Yeah, they still do, and and I think that's important. They still absolutely. do. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what other things have you done? Have you ever wanted to do Broadway or? I had plays? an opportunity. I had an opportunity to be off Broadway. Well, not uh, I guess it's off off Broadway, but uh, several years ago, like more than several years ago, I guess more than 10 years ago, I happened to uh, be on stage in a local production. And one of the, the actual, the producer of another show happened to see the show and asked me to fill in because the, the lead left for whatever reason. And uh, I agreed to do it. I agreed to do the show. Mm -hmm. It was about the life of Paul Gauguin, the artist. And uh, he said, you know, I take it to New York for one performance. And I said, well, how great, because on your resume, you know, <laughs> you're in an off-Broadway production, or if that is called off-Broadway. Uh, but it was also here. It was filmed for TV as well. So that was a good opportunity for me, too. It's a lot different than being in a film, of course. Absolutely. But it's good training, yeah. and I had a lot of fun doing it. And you it. still have an account with Boston Cast, who's in similar... You know. the, the casting agencies, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. of course. So you check that box. Is that something that you want to do again? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, you would? Yeah. Um, what box is that? Check. check. You know, yeah, it's no, like I know the, you the mean bucket list. Which you know? Yeah, but what were you asking Being if you want? Off Broadway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's I would all, do, yeah, that's no, I would do that, but I'll tell yeah. you, it's, it's uh, yes, I would. That's a great question. Yeah. I would definitely do that, but boy, learning all those lines. Oh, and doing it live. live. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we did the show, <laughs> we did the show several times here in Boston. And we did it in Cambridge. It was filmed in Cambridge, as a matter of fact. Mm. I think it was the Cambridge Arts Center. It was on television. And 
we, f we presented it uh, for a few performances in, the th in Boston's theater district. And then it was brought to New York. But it was in New York at the very last performance. That was the last time that we were going to do the show. And boy, was that perfect. Yeah. Because you had done it so often that now you it's like perfect. Memorized. But then it's, it's over. Yeah. And that's the one thing about plays versus film. When you do a film, it's up there forever. Right. When you, you do a play, one it's and done. over. Yeah. You know, but that, that, that's such a great experience. It really is. Have you done plays? Yeah. No, I haven't. But, um, I'm pretty well-rounded in all the other areas, and I think that's truly how you find out how your weaknesses and your strengths are in this mm -hmm. industry and what your likes. But you're and doing both are. of you, Peter. Yeah. You have you done? Yes, he I, did. I, I, I've both done. Both of you are doing live performance. I mean, even yeah. though this is taped, it's yeah. still a live. Well, like you, John, right. you were talking about all those lines. I was in a murder mystery where people are paying, you know, obviously to, for dinner, and they're here to right. say so. I didn't like get dinner, up there, dinner, right? but I had 45 lines. Right in a row. Oh. That's a lot. Right in a row. And what happened was, is um, I, I was screwing up the third one. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. And I recovered. And the other ones went flawless. But they never knew I didn't get the Well, line. that's a testament that's, of being a good actor. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I'm right, just saying right, that. Yeah, I was so that. worried because there's no, say, hey, can we do this again? You that's, don't mind, do you? <laughs> right. I know you paid for this, but God, what do you want? No, 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 you know what I'm saying. So I do. I there was do. that pressure. And then I was an onstage narrator for a... Um, love, I forget, some musical, and I would come out and read the narration story. Isn't that a great feeling? Oh, that was, because yeah. I, had a, I didn't have to memorize. No, that's The book easy. was part of my... But the, that's the edge when right. you are on stage yeah. without the line, without the, you know, the, the script, and you have to do that. That's the yeah. edge to that. And that can, other, be, that can be intimidating. And other actors are depending Very on you. Very intimidating. Oh, yeah, sure. You start screwing up, they, get, they could get screwed up. They did the blocking and everything that you got to Because they're relying on your right, cue. Right, the cue. The cues, right. <laughs> right. Can it's we do like this being again? on ice, <laughs> like doing an ice performance, and you're out there and you do oh. that first few spins. Well, you know what? That's <laughs> this is like improv, though. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what you're doing, right? You and Anne do yeah. sort of like improv. Oh of yeah. Course, you know, it's more than well, that. Well, you and Jim do it too. <laughs> we do too. Yeah. We do too, and uh, and and it's good to have like both of you have you work off each other, you know, and, and Jim and I are able to co-host the show together, and it's good that way because what. I might not think of maybe Jim does. Absolutely. You know, and he's looking at it from a different perspective. And it works. And that's why we are called Venus and Mars, too. It's not, people tend to think yeah. that it's the woman versus the man. Right, right. that's it, Venus, Mars? Or yeah, 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 yeah. But notice it's not V versus Mars, or again, so it's and Mars. Yeah. Venus and Mars. It's just, I mean, we've had topics, discussions, and stuff. So it was more, but it's really a, a, a female perspective and a male perspective on the mm -hmm. same subject. Right? Yeah. And it very rarely has been contentious. I mean, it's not like only if he young. gets out of line. Yeah. John. She she keeps me so, you know, <laughs> grounded or whatever it is. I tend to get you know a little bit. Uh, I need to be lassoed every now and then. Well, it's a great show though. I mean, you are able to bring to the public things that the public should see, right? Well, we're having a lot of fun doing it, yeah. too. Meeting great people, like that is probably the number one thing sure. about doing this, is um, meeting all different kinds of people and knowing their backgrounds. Mm. We've done a lot of work with the police, oh. um, Homeland Security, environmental. You First know. responders. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we haven't gotten to that level yet because we've only been doing this a year now. Yeah. Well, and when you were on my show, and we, gotta, we have to applaud them because they do such a great job. But I when know. You, both of you were on my show, we talked about that. Yes. You know. Okay, yes. I'm going to just say this because be, we're going to edit it out. Uh, he just gave me the sign because they didn't have the clock going, so we've okay. got one minute left, so okay. we're going to wind down. Yeah. That's fine. We'll edit all that out. But, yeah. Uh, That's fine. Whatever you um, want to talk about. And I'll, and I'll start it by saying, just now I'm going to be talking again. Um, yes, and Ann and I, that's why we wanted to get a show every two weeks to build the chemistry up. Mm -hmm. We started to get chemistry, and then we had a, a gap, and we kind of had to relearn it. But when we came back, we started doing the show a little differently as well. But anyway, John, thank you so much for coming on oh, no, our show and today. It was my pleasure, it. Peter. Yeah, it was no, my thank pleasure. you so thank much. You. We appreciate it, John. Thanks. Yes. Hopefully, we'll do it again. Do you want to come back, or you've had <laughs> I would enough? love to come. No, <laughs> I would love to come back. I would, I would love sure, to come you can back. take it. <laughs> I, I, and we're hoping. I one think day. I can handle it. I'm no. not. Enough. I think I can. But I think you can. I think you got a good background oh, to do it. Well, it's really great to see John again, wasn't it? Great isn't the word. I'm such a fan of him yeah. anyway. Yeah, he's got a great delivery, too. He's got a great voice. Um, Not only that, but his look with him and Jim, 
I want people to watch their show, it kind of gives them that feel back to Johnny Carson. Yeah, right. Exactly. Is that what it right. does? Yeah, there's a yeah. straight man in sort of the, uh, well, I don't know if Johnny was straight, but uh, I mean straight in terms of fun. Uh, Cut that. I don't want that in there. No. No, no humor. <laughs> I meant uh, not us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no. Um, anyway, it's good to have him on. I look forward to having him and Elaine, Elaine. Gray. Elaine yes. Gray coming She's to do a uh, big talent. And uh, in maybe the be talking about a book. A uh, book? Yes. Yeah. They are co writing one. Yeah. So we have a lot well, to that, discuss that when it comes be back. No, that ought to be interesting. Well, I hate to say it. This, it, it went really fast into the show. <laughs> I think it's, so. it's all over again. Well, I that, know. Sh that should do it. Uh, until next time, I'm Peter. I'm Anne. And where planets align but often, often collide. collide. <laughs> often collide. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for watching.